The impact of the Israel-Hamas war continues to be far-reaching, including right here at home. This afternoon, former Maryland Governor Larry Hogan joined GMA3 to discuss why he withdrew his offer to participate in fellowships at Harvard University after dozens of student groups released a statement where they blamed Israel for the terrorist attacks they suffered from on October 7th by Hamas. Here's what he had to say. I do uh, respect the, the the right of the students. Uh, free speech is important, um, but the this was this crossed the line, and they have that right. But I thought the university ought to push back very forcefully and directly about the messages. At NYU, another fallout happened when NYU Law School Student Bar Association President Rena Workman released a statement saying, in part, Israel bears full responsibility for this tremendous loss of life. Rena joins us now. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, you say that you're now on the receiving end of a harassment campaign. Explain what you mean by that. Yeah, so I think that the backlash against me and the consequences that I faced have been well documented. But I think it's important to note that right now we're using this backlash as a big distraction from what's really going on, and that's the genocide happening in Gaza. And I think we should all really be focused on calling for a ceasefire and ending the violence that we're seeing playing out right now. If you were to redo the letter, obviously with the benefit of hindsight, anything you would have done differently? I think I will continue to speak up for Palestinian human rights and use whatever platform I have available to me to call for a ceasefire and you know, end this occupation that's harming the Palestinians. I'm going to just try one more time. Would you change anything, even the timing of it? Because some people felt it was too soon because your letter came before Israel even launched any kind of retaliation. I think it's important to note that the genocide happening right now did not start on October 7th. It started over 75 years ago. And that was what my message was intended to get across, was that we are seeing violence happening that is part of a much larger uh, structural violence uh, system that is happening in Palestine right now. Do you condemn Hamas's actions on October 7th? I think what I use my platform for and who I condemn was pretty clear by my message. And I think that I will continue to condemn apartheid and military occupation. And that in this moment, I'm focused on calling for an end to genocide and calling for an immediate ceasefire. Do you think that in this space that we're in right now, there's room to have empathy for the Israelis who lost their lives, who were brutalized, were raped, and also empathy for the Palestinians who are similarly losing their lives. Yeah, I think right now, if you turn on any mainstream channel, you'll see the stories of Israelis on every screen you look to. And so I think for me, I will continue to use my platform to uplift the voices of Palestinians and the struggles they're going through, because right now we have over 5,000 Palestinian lives lost, and they are asking us and begging us to share their stories, and that's what I will continue to do. Do you have empathy for the Israeli victims? I think whether or not my empathy goes to Israelis or to Palestinians is really not the question here. What the question is, is will we call for an end to this genocide and will we call for a ceasefire? Rena, we thank you so much for coming on the show. Appreciate it. Thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.